All right. So budgets. So budgets have a couple of options. You're going to have a budget versus actual comparison report, which is the most commonly used report. You can actually break down a budget by class, by customer, or an overall budget for the company. So it does give you the option to do it based on a class or a customer. Now, budgets give you an additional function called the performance report that allows you to also compare your year-to-date performance. Now, one little uh, interesting tidbit is you can actually export your budgets into IIF, modify them in Excel, and import them back in. And if I have time, we'll cover that. Okay, so we are in QuickBooks Desktop now, and let's go just through the basic motions on how we set up a budget. So the first thing we do is we'll go to the company menu, planning and budgeting, and click on set up budgets. All right, we'll click on set up budgets. And then by default, if I already have created a budget, uh, QuickBooks will pop up with the last budget that was created. I can actually click on the right here where it says create new budget, and I can click on that. And then I can choose the year in which I want to create that budget for. So for example, uh, in this sample file, this is all, uh, I believe it's a 2018 year. So we're going to use 2018 for the budget. That way we can compare some of the reports there. And then it asks, is asking you whether you want to do a budget of the profit and loss or a budget of the balance sheet. They're two separate individual budgets. You would have to create them um, individually. So let me go ahead and click next. Then it's asking you, do you want to do an overall budget, right? No additional criteria. This is, this would be for the entire company. Or do you want to break it down by class or by job? So that's possible too. Uh, I'm going to do it with no additional criteria. Then I'll hit next. Okay. Now, um, you can now choose, or, or one of the options you have, you can choose to just type all the data by hand. So you're going to type every single income and expense uh, projection by hand, or you can grab uh, the actual year's data as a starting point. So QuickBooks can say, okay, let me grab whatever you did the previous year, and let me put it as a budget for uh, the next year. So let me go ahead and hit finish. Okay, and then QuickBooks will automatically create a budget based on last year's data. Now, let me show you some of the components here because some of these are pretty interesting. Uh, for example, if you look at January of 2018, there's a number there, okay? And all these numbers, again, we told it to create the information based on historical information, but if I can change this, so if I want to make this 25,000, I can just literally just type it in there but there's a, a, a interesting button in the bottom called copy across. So if I click on copy across, it will take the $25,000 and it will move them to every single uh, month. So then you can basically create a, a raw number that gets copied across. So you only really have to do that once. Now, by nature, QuickBooks budgets are based on months. They're monthly budgets. So that's a really important piece to just kind of get it, um, get that uh, settled. Now, once I copy the 25,000 across, I can click on the bottom uh, left here where it says adjust row amounts. So if I click on adjust row amounts, I can actually say, all right, so starting the first month, I want you to increase that amount by, let's say, 2%. Okay. So I'm basically telling it to go up 2%. Okay. And I hit OK. And basically, it's going to increase all the dollar amounts by 2%. So that's kind of a one of the interesting things about that. Now, if I select um, this second option called currently selected month, which happens to also be January, we can also enable compounding. So enable compounding would be that it not only increases it by 2% across the board, but it also increases it by 2% upon itself. So it would be 2% times 2% times 2%. So you'll get this sort of exponential increase. So I can hit okay. And then you can see, um, that exponential increase of, let's put here 2%. And make sure you put a percent sign, not a dollar sign, because it would just go up by $2, okay? So then you see a 2% exponential increase of your sales. So let's assume that's, that's going to be my sales projection. Now going down a little bit, I can go um, expense account by expense account and also choose 
uh, whatever I want uh, in there if I want to manually change it, or I can leave it there just for the sake of, of uh, moving forward. Now, if I hit clear, my entire budget will be deleted, and basically I would have to start from scratch. So let me go ahead and hit OK. And now my budget is created. So now what do we do with our budget? Well, we can do a couple of things. One, we can go to reports. We can go into budget and forecast. And then basically we're going to have three choices here for budgets. We're going to have budget overview, budget versus actual, and budget performance. So let's go through each one. So budget overview would just be a report that shows me my budget. There's no comparison with sales. There's no um, there's no uh, performance data. This is literally a profit and loss based on a budget, not based on actual data. And then the the, the normal uh, options here apply. We can do this by quarter if we wanted to, or by by day. In this case, uh, QuickBooks will literally split the month by thirty or by week, and it will literally split the month by four or five weeks, however weeks are in the month. So it's really, really interesting um, how you create the budget in a monthly basis, but QuickBooks can splice it and dice it in several uh, formats when it comes to, to timing, right? So that so that is um, the budget overview. Let me go ahead and close that, and let's go to the report that people actually really use, which is the budget versus actuals, and we'll go through the through some of the details there. So budget versus actual, again, it will ask me which year's budget you want to do, and that's based on the budgets you have created. And then I'll click on next. And then if I have uh, multiple budgets, like by class or by job, it will ask me there um, if I want to pull any of those specifically. But in this case, I'm just going to do uh, the standard by month and then click finish. And budget versus actual, in its nature, is going to show four columns. The actual numbers, which is the one that contains the month. So this one that says January 18th, that's the actual number. And then budget would be the budgeted amount. Uh, dollar over budget, that would be the, you know how much more or less I am in terms of getting close to budget. And then the percentage, right? Whether I am 84% uh, close to hitting budget or maybe over budget in some cases, whenever you see 100% over budget in some cases. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get that red in there? Right? Because for budgets, I think it's important to do colors because you really want those numbers to stand out. So the way you get red in there, just to show you, we got a customized report, we got a funds and numbers, and we actually hit this little checkbox here that says in bright red. Um, so we can actually just leave it in black if I want to, but then if you're under budget, it doesn't show. So I find that extremely valuable to do at least the bright red there. Now, the other thing is when it comes to budgets, I normally just get rid of the cents. Uh, I, I find that a lot of times uh, the cents just tend to be a bit confusing. So I'm going to hit OK there. And then and then for most people, it actually uh, it's just a lot more uh, palpable to work th that way. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to turn off the cents or anything like that. Um, but I mean, that's just, just an option. OK. Now, as I go through my budget here, notice that I got four columns. I got uh, actual. I got the budget. I got a dollar amount, percentage amount. I'm gonna click on customize report. I can actually turn these off. So if I don't want to see the dollar percentage or I mean the dollar difference or the or the budget percent, I can take that away and literally just compare them two without the difference. Now, most people need that variance, absolutely need that variance. Um, you know, so I'm not advocating to turn that off. I'm just you know, showing you. Now, the other um, kind of thing that people, most people don't get to here on this advanced window, it shows you a couple of interesting things. This one says, show only rows and columns with budgets. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and then hit OK. And then I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So for example, if I happen not to have a budget in the advertising line, Okay, the advertising line will pretty much go away. So what I mean by that is if you go back into your budget here, so I'm gonna edit my budget, I'm gonna go down to advertising. So if I have my advertising line uh, completely blank, so there's no, no budget in it, and I may have to refresh that report. Okay, that, that budget will line, I will have to refresh the report, but that, that's how you can hide some of the lines that don't have a budget. So that's 
once you run the report, I would, I would have to rerun it, but once you run the report, that uh, that will go away if there are no budgets on that particular line or that particular month. Now, the other important thing is display rows. Now here it says active. If I click on all, it will also display the accounts that don't have any information whatsoever. So if I happen to have uh, not have a budget or not even have any financial data, that also includes that in there. And I tell you, a lot of times what ends up happening is you print a budget report and there's a, an account in the chart of accounts that most that people are used to seeing there, but it happens to have no numbers. It's important to show that too, because it's important for people to know that that, that has not have any budgets or it hasn't been used. And of course, if you don't want that to show up in there, don't hit that checkbox or uh, delete the account or something like that. All right. Um, so that's that's budget versus actual. That's really all you need to know about that. Let me pull one more report on the budget side, which is going to be profit and loss uh, budget performance. Now, the profit and loss budget performance is pretty much the same thing. However, it's going to add one more additional column. And this is much more useful whenever you're comparing a month or a quarter only. Um, so, for example, right now I'm going to compare just the current month. Now, the performance version of the profit and loss gives you two additional columns. One is my January to December year-to-date performance versus my year-to-date budget versus my annual budget. So um, year-to-date budget and annual budget are different, actually. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I actually put 0701 2018 versus 731 2018. So I'm just going to look at July. So if you look at that year to date budget, that would be the accumulation of the budgeted amount from January through July. However, annual budget would be the entire budget from January all the way to December. So that's a really important piece to know because that allows you to compare uh, some of these. Now, under customized report, you can also enable dollar difference and budget difference if I wanted to. Now, another common question I have is, Hector, I just want to see my budget for my expenses. I don't want to see the sales account. So that's pretty easy. So we're going to go to customize report, and then we're going to go into filters. And then here where it says account, all income and expense accounts, we're going to change that to all ordinary expense accounts. Okay, Or we can do expense and other expense accounts. We can do uh, both. And then I hit OK. And then I am not going to be looking at any uh, sales budgets. I'm going to be looking at just expense budgets. And because these reports get so big, right, budget reports are usually big. And we had a big group of the crowd here that's logged in um, that answered the question that they'd be using uh, um, budgets quite a bit. Then that, that, that know this. So what ends up happening is sometimes, this is just a tip, uh, sometimes when you look at budgets, sometimes it's, it's not just good to look at your income and expense budgets combined, sometimes just looking at the expenses by itself could be useful, okay? Um, all right, so let me go ahead and close that. Let's go to now uh, forecasts. So forecasts are almost, almost identical to budgets. However, you can't break it down by class or customer job the way you can do it with, um, with a budget and you do not get the year-to-date performance, and also you cannot export and import via IIF. So a forecast is it's a really uh, light version of budget, so you can use it as, quote-unquote, an additional budget, but it is not as powerful. So I would suggest that you, you focus on working with the budget and then only work with the forecast uh, when you need to. So let's go into the forecast here. So let's go into forecast real quick. And forecast works very similarly. Like I get to pick my year, and um, and I, I did. I am working with QuickBooks Enterprise, by the way, in this one. So Enterprise would allow you to do class and customer job, but QuickBooks Pro wouldn't um, for forecast. So I'm going to go to next, and then I can do the same thing. I can create a forecast based on previous year's data, and everything on this screen is pretty much identical. I can I can change these numbers. You know, maybe I want to be little bit more far, far fetched here on my on my sales and um, and, and again it, it's 
I would say for the most part, just don't think of this as an entirely different function. This is just like, just, just like budgets. Um, so when I run the report, I'm going to go to budgets and forecasts and then notice I only get the overview and the actual, I don't get the performance or the graph. So let me go to budget versus actual and hit finish and finish. And all the functionality is the same. All the functionality is consistent. I can choose what to show to compare against. I can do these by, by quarter if I want to. So, um, so again, just think of it as a secondary, think of it as a secondary budget. Okay. Just what you don't get is that performance uh, report, which is the one that gives you that year to date and that, um, and that annual budget. Now, if I go to the graph, the, the budget versus actual graph, uh, which I normally don't work with it too much, but you know, some people find it really useful. Um, you could do it this way. So you could, you could run the graph that will compare budget versus actual um, and show you when you're, where you're under and where you're under, whether you're favorable or unfavorable in terms of your uh, profit and loss. So that this could be useful, but I personally um, don't use it very often, but it is there. Okay, so that's, that's budgets and forecasts.